嚇，入開你入嚟就開噶啦 ，OK， 等你嘅啫，係 OK， 可以好啊，你可以握下手啊。<笑>誒、uh, 各位委員，我哋 members is time and we have a quorum。This is a special meeting, members. Yes. Please keep your hands up. Now we have this special meeting, especially、uh, this time, because we want to accommodate the schedule of Barrister Ho, and I am really surprised how come he is not here today. And、uh, having read his letter, I have a lot of questions. Now, if you read his letter, you see that what he said、uh, is the complete opposite of what the Chief Executive said. The um, um, He is all refuted almost every point that the chief executive has said has made. So、uh, I think we need to ask his、uh, views and、uh, see how he proposes to deal with the matter. Maybe we could schedule another matter,、uh, another meeting, to suit his schedule, so he could come and answer our questions. Now members have raised this point about、um, the chairman of the communications authority, Mr. Ho. He is not able to attend our meeting. And、uh, some members believe we ought to invite him to another meeting. Well, we can pass on that request to him. Does he give any reasons why he is not coming today? If you read the letter, the letter was only sent to us last night, and then we've issued it to you today. The letter had、uh, or, or last paragraph says it says here.、Uh, The、uh, note setting out the matter in which the authority has processed the three applications is attached for the information of panel members. As the authority has nothing further to add to the issues to be discussed by the panel, we regret that the authority will not be represented at the panel meeting on the eighth of November. Now, before the meeting, we、uh, uh, liaise with the administration con continuously, hoping that they would come. In fact, on、uh, the announcement. On the second day after the announcement of the decision, I met with Mr. Gregso, and I specifically asked him that、uh, we would be having a meeting on the eighth of November, and、uh, we have expected Mr. Ho to attend the meeting because、uh, we need、uh, to see, you know, the two、uh, free-to-air. TV,、um, they have、um, breached some of the regulations.、Uh, we want to、uh, talk about the rulings made by the Communications Authority, and、uh, in fact, um, uh, the two TV operators could also come and、uh, put their case. And that's why、uh, we originally scheduled a meeting today for that particular issue. But of course, then subsequently, I said uh, uh, perhaps uh, with this new. Decision that's going to spark a controversy. So、uh, we've changed the subject of this special meeting to the、uh, applications for domestic free TV license. But originally, we've asked Mr. Ho to come to a meeting to talk about the other issue about the two existing TV operators. Anyway, last night we received this letter from the Communications Authority. They said they would not come to the meeting, but they didn't give an,、uh, an explanation. So that's the background to the case. Now we have limited time. We still have to proceed with this meeting because、uh, Ricky Wong is here and other relevant parties are also here. So this would be the opportunity for members to ask、uh, questions of the relevant、uh, parties after they have、um, made their statement. And、as for Mr. Gregso, as usual, of course, he'll be here to answer members' questions. Perhaps he's going to say exactly the same thing too. So, not not more than one minute,、uh, please. If you、uh, want to say,、uh, if you want to suggest what we're going to do with、um, the absence of Miss Ambrose Ho, Miss Claudia Mo, 
Now, I got this letter from the Communications Authority. I was completely shocked. And you could say that they are uh, drawing a, a, a line at all. They are um, with the administration. Uh, have they been under pressure by the Western District? The Communications Authority chairman has to face LegCo and the public. Now, I'm worried that if you invite him again, he still would not come. Because he said in this letter he has nothing further to add, but uh, he should allow us to ask questions so we could seek further answers. So please invite him again. Anyone else, Mr. Ray Chen? No, no one else. Mr. Dennis Kwok. I've um, actually prepared a lot of questions for the Communications Authority Chairman. So at least uh, we should write to him as the panel. If members have questions for him, at least uh, we could uh, put the questions in writing to him. And then we ask him to come to another panel meeting to give us answers. He can't just say he has nothing further to add. We will write to him, okay? Summing up your views, but uh, in terms of the um, system, uh, the CA uh, vice chairman is the permanent secretary, and the chairman is not an official. So you could refer to the communications authority ordinance, okay? We cannot really force him to come. We can't uh, treat him like um, government officials. But we can strongly request him to come, and we will pass on members' views. That's what we'll do, okay? Ms. Emily Long, yes, we have to ask Mr. Ho how come he's not coming to the meeting. It's not the case that he's refused to come in the past. You know, uh, you remember he's been to our meetings before. Uh, I don't know why he refuses to come this time, because in the past he has come to our meetings to answer questions. Why has he changed his practice? And I agree, if members have any questions, the uh, clerk could collect all the questions, and then we'll ask him to come and answer the questions. And is it up to him whether he wants to come or not? Uh, how can that be? Ms. It Ho? Well, 20 paragraphs of information are provided, but then that uh, information could lead to further questions. For instance, he men it's mentioned that the consultant believed that the market can accommodate five um, TV stations, but then individual TV stations could uh, make their best um, professional assessment based on their experience. So definitely could, that could lead to further questions. I agree with them. Um, Mr. Dennis Kwok, perhaps we could uh, put together all our questions, either or, uh, and then we'll ask the CA to answer those questions. Best if they could send someone to answer the questions. Mr. Ronnie Tong, if members want to submit their questions in advance, that's fine. But I want him to come in person, because then we could follow up on uh, answers given. I don't think we should limit ourselves to written questions. Of course, if members wish to ask written questions, I couldn't stop them. But I want him to come to answer questions orally. Any other comments? No? That, then that's what we'll do. We'll resort to um, all means to convince him to come. But uh, obviously, it seems the government doesn't want him to come. To the meeting, but uh, you could study the uh, paper uh, in detail. And uh, before it's your turn to speak, maybe you could study this paper from from the CAA. And then I'm sure you have a lot of questions because just now already, uh, some members pointed out uh, that um, this is a completely different position from what's been said. Uh, I'm quite uh, surprised to see this uh, paper myself. But anyway, I'll leave it to you to uh, ask questions later on. Okay, let's come back to the. Uh, Agenda item. This meeting is on issue, uh, allow members to follow up on issues relating to the applications for domestic free television program service licenses. I'd like to welcome government representatives from the Commerce and uh, Economic D Development uh, Bureau. And then there are also representatives from the Hong Kong Television Network Limited, Hong Kong Television Trade Union, and Hong Kong Television Entertainment Company Limited. Now, uh, we have also invited uh, TVB, ATV, and Fantastic TV to send representatives to the meeting, but the three organizations uh, replied that they would not be sending any rep representatives to the meeting. 
And uh, uh, also, as I w we mentioned just now, the Communications Authority also wrote to us yesterday to say that Chairman would not be attending the meeting today. And uh, attached to their letter, they have provided paper on the process and how they deal with the uh, three applications uh, in detail. So that's paper number CB bracket 413213-14 bracket 02. So that's the paper you might wish to refer to, members. Now we have um, from the Hong Kong Television Network and the Hong Kong Television Entertainment Company Limited representatives here. Do they have a copy of the CAE's letter? Okay, then let's give them a copy. And can I remind you to wear the earpiece and tune into the channel? You wish uh, um, floor zero is floor, uh, one is uh, Cantonese, and channel two is English. We do have an expatriate here. And apart from um, Lechko members and government of, uh, designated government officials, all others present at the meeting here. Their speech and their written submissions are not protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. I need to remind you that. And also in accordance with Art uh, Rule 84, 3A and B um, of the Rules of Procedure, if members have any direct or indirect pecuniary interest, you must declare the interest before you speak, members. I will first of all invite the Secretary to speak, and then I will invite um, the representatives of the different organizations to speak, and then mem the floor will be open for questions by members. Well, the Secretary has said a lot already, and uh, perhaps we have l mm, not much expectation of what he's going to say. So, Secretary, three minutes each. And, of course, we also have uh, the Mr. Joe Wong, Deputy Secretary, here. As for uh, representatives from the organizations, you each get uh, six minutes. Ricky, Mr. Ricky Wong, I think six minutes is good enough for you. All right. And then, of course, members will ask questions, and then you could reply or uh, supplement your views. And, and then after that, uh, uh, each member will get four minutes to ask questions and get answers. Okay? That's how we'll proceed. Now, Secretary, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, in the past two days, uh, there were more than 12 hours of um, debate on two motions. And in the past uh, month or so, um, we have released uh, press releases. We have um, also explained um, the, how, the, how the government handled uh, free applications on various, uh, at various forums, you know, the assessment criteria and so on. We've explained all that. And then on Tuesday, afternoon, we published a detailed uh, written statement to further explain the decision of the Executive Council, especially the 11 factors and the four assessment criteria cons uh, considered by the Executive Council. I, I won't propose to repeat those points because um, these have been adequately dis discussed in the debate. Now, um, the Executive Council, in considering public interest, believed uh, we have to consider the overall sustainability of the free TV market. The overall sustainability and um, um, viability of the free TV market is not about whether an individual TV station will make money or lose money. Rather, we're looking at the overall environment. We want to make sure that uh, as we introduce competition, we could uh, enhance effectiveness, but at the same time, we do not want to, we want to minimize the negative impact on the free TV market as we introduce in, uh, in competition. Now, for the past 40 years, there were never new players in the market. And so we have done a market study based on the proposal submitted by the free applicants. So we've commissioned a consultant to do that study. And in the past two days, of course, uh, there has been a lot of discussion on those consultants' reports. Again, I won't repeat those points. Now, the current... Uh, um, policy of opening up the free TV market. Legally speaking, there is not a cap on the number of licenses, but then it doesn't mean that any application will be approved. And it also doesn't mean that the Executive Council uh, should ignore the viability of the, of the overall TV market and uh, make decisions that may undermine public interest. So Exco adopts a cautious and prudent approach in handling the applications. Now, um, because of time constraint, I will not um, say much more. I just want to say that as I was coming into this uh, conference room, I met um, staff of the Hong Kong TV network. They said something 
uh, simple. That is, we are not enemies. Now, I'm the uh, secretary uh, in charge of um, promoting pro our broadcasting policy. It's not that we are at um, uh, odds uh, with each other in any way. We just try to um, pro find more choices so the public want to see uh, the healthy and orderly development of the market, and we are working in that direction. And uh, today, I hope that uh, we could uh, take things forward and we could help to, uh, work together to promote the development of the industry. Thank you. Next, I invite um, the chairman of the Hong Kong Television Network Limited, Hong Kong TV, Mr. Ricky Wong, to speak. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Members. In relation to the um, denial of a license in the past um, 20 hours or so, there has been a lot of arguments being put forward. I'm not going to repeat them. I'd like to say three things to you. In recent, in recent days, I have gone to a lot of universities uh, to share my painful experience with the students. Very often they ask a question whether Hong Kong is still a place that is uh, conducive to creativity. And I introduced them a book. On page 114, the author writes, Hong Kong advocates competition. Hong Kong people accepts the rule that only the fittest will survive because this will promote societal development. On page 115, the author goes on, Hong Kong society attaches importance on self-reliance. It also advocates, it also uh, highly commends people who um, start from scratch and make it to the top. And they all so ask questions, and on page one two one four two, when the author talks about um, financial services center, he says, in terms of scale and capability, Hong Kong ranks third behind New York and London. We still have to ask if you if you um, are the third in the class. What about your score? Do you fail in certain subjects? And uh, lastly, uh, students always ask me, Ricky, will you give up? Once again, I quote page 47 of the same book, and it goes, Hong Kong people is lovely because Hong Kong people are um, determined and they're hardworking and they have a, a high spirit that cannot be defeated. If we share the same dream, we have to pursue it. First of all, we have to take stock of reality and know what is in store, and then try to see the same thing from different perspective, and then try to think out of the box. The, the book is written by our chief executive, the CY Leung, and the book. The title goes um, was to the effect, "If um, it's your children." So, according to CY Leung, we have to pursue the Hong Kong dream. Thank you very much. Next, are you the chairman um, of the Hong Kong Television Trade Union, Mr. Henry Young? Thank you. In the past 10 days or so, we've uh, sat a lot uh, outside the square. And in the past two days, we've been keeping close account of what happened inside the council. We've listened to many different arguments. Our stance is that uh, the policy remains the same, as the secretary said, that there is no ceiling on the number of licenses. Well, he said that um, in it's not the case that every applicant will be grant will be automatically granted an alliance. Mr. Lam Wun Kong said I uh, used a uh, metaphor of um, of an eatery, but for a restaurant, as long as you meet the fire services requirements and hygiene requirements, then you will be given a license. So is it the case that we have to meet certain standards before we are granted a license? I don't see an answer here. And in relation to competition, what I saw 
from a media report in the past two days, where cable TV said that、uh, they may not make a profit. TVB, after their、um, show, they said that、uh, there will be an increase in、um, in the in their price, eight to twenty five percent in their advertising rate. So, is it the kind of competition you would like to see, Secretary? Of course,、uh, we advocate a free market. Competition is a core value in such a market, and we can't see and we don't understand why there is no、um, acceptable solution arrived at from this incident. And we've received a lot of information. Some saying that is it because uh, of. Um, Financial fi financial capability is not sound, but according to the broadcasting author、uh, ordinance、uh, cap five six two, and it says that、uh, under section a three that a、uh, that a service license shall not be granted to a company which is subsidiary of a corporation. If that is the case, how come? That the administration has been saying that、uh, the parent company's situation will be taken into account. If that is the case, then why are they trying to、um, legalize something that is, in the first place, not legal? Next, from the Hong Kong Television Entertainment Company Limited, there are two representatives. So who is、uh, to speak? Miss Janice Lee. Chairman, members, I thank the panel for inviting us to attend.、Uh, first of all, I thank the administration's decision、uh, for to grant approval in principle、um, to offer a TV license on behalf of the PCCW because、uh, this will improve our、um, program quality and there will be more choices as a result. PCCW has a rich experience,、uh, including、uh, pay TV. In the past few years,、uh, we have been trying to recruit talent. We have a professional team, and in In terms of financial capability, we have the support of、um, PCCW to provide a high-quality free-to-air television service. We understand that、uh, we have been striving to do our、uh, to do better and to、um, give、um, a wider、um, diversity of on our program journal and. We have yet to get a proper license, but we've been making preparation. And I'd like to talk to you about、uh, our plan to develop free-to-air television. We undertake that、uh, in the first、uh, six years, and、uh, we will put in one, over one point three billion dollars. Most of them will、uh, uh, will go into a pool of、uh, talent and um, uh, and uh, program production. And we will keep in mind local taste. There will be every day over eight hours of、um, new programs. So a year over three thousand, and for locally produced、um, programs, every year over one thousand, over five hundred、um, hours. We have completed the, the first、um, program, and、uh, we are about to start the second and the third、uh, program, and they are all of、uh, large scale. Not only do we provide a quality program, and in recent years we have、uh, been in. Trying to procure quality program, and we've got some broadcasting rights. Say, for example,、uh, sports、uh, programs.、Uh, in terms of sports programs,、uh, we have a very pop. We have acquired the rights of、uh, popular sports shows, and、uh, we arrange for them to be broadcast in the free television. We also promote the、uh, sports development in Hong Kong, so we will also produce some locally produced programs on sports. Say, for example, inter-school competition. Of course, we have a professional team in、uh, news、um, production, and we also have、uh, a very、um, rich genre of、uh, entertainment shows. Say, for example, lifestyle and cookery programs, and we will. Continue to、um, put in ta talent and recruit talent to give them a platform to shine. We also have、um, uh, a new program put in place.、Uh, we treat everyone equally, and this is uh, to um, recruit. Uh, People with creative talent for them to play to their potential. We will put in three hundred million dollars. This will、um, promote a locally produced、um, programs, and at the same time, we will we will look for quality 
programs are produced by local production uh, companies where we have met with uh, directors, um, producers, and um, practitioners. And we, I have got some information with me, and I'll share them with you. We roll out this special scheme because in order to have a healthy market, there should be a variety of production companies. Independent production is also a re one of the reasons why a TV market will be successful. We have um, Taiwan, UK, and the USA as prime examples. We also agree that um, youngsters uh, would like to uh, maintain their independence because for people with a uh, with a um, high level of creativity, they would like to engage in a multi-media uh, production, say, for example, TV, film, music, um, etc. And this will give that, that the, all these will be um, their news. So we give them an open platform to participate in TV production. In terms of our strategy, apart from producing a certain hours of production through this scheme, we will. We uh, we will introduce a new element in which that uh, programs are no longer uh, produced and made uh, under the same roof. This will be new energy injected into the market. We also have uh, some mini TV series and also um, TV um, movies. And this is one of the programs that we have uh, up our sleeve. Um, within two months, we will be able to. Uh, within two years, we'll be able to start rolling out uh, some um, programs. So we hope that um, um, the um, licensing conditions will be put in place as soon as possible, so that we can continue to move ahead. There are a lot of uh, members who have raised their hands, and so let me read out their names. Today, I thank uh, members for attend for attending. Some of them are not members of this panel, but before I open the floor, I'd like to say that uh, eight members have uh, signed in a joint um, motion, and we will bef uh, we will deal with it before we finish today's meeting. Let me read out the names. Ronnie Tom, Charles Mock, uh, Claudia Mo, La Emily Lau, Ray Chen, uh, Ma Feng Kuo, Ng Leng Xing, um, Ho Chun Yin, and a uh, number of other members. I have read out your name, Stephen Ho. No, you did not. You don't intend to speak. Four minutes each. Apart from asking questions of uh, government officials, uh, you may also uh, get you may also ask uh, organizations to reply to you. First, Ronnie Tong. In relation to Mr. Ambrose Ho's um, letter, I find it regrettable. If we received this letter a few days ago, it would have um, affected the um, result of the voting on Wednesday. I am quite surprised of the content of this letter because the, the so-called justifications put forward by the administrations are all rebutted in this letter. And he said that uh, when the report was was made, um, these such. Uh, the administration's justifications are all considered, but the result is exactly the opposite. So the first thing I'd like to ask the secretary is, what is the chronology? The chairman, Mr. Ambrose Ho, put forward his views, and they are um, on the complete opposite of that of uh, the administration. Is it the case that the administration uh, knew beforehand the views of uh, Mr. Ho? If that is the case, uh, did they explore with Mr. Ho why he would arrive at um, these views? Number two, if uh, Mr. Ho's views were unknown to the administration before that that decision was made, and if the administration's decisions are based on these uh, justifications, then should the administration uh, study the issue with Mr. Ho again, or if necessary, uh, revisit that decision and reconsider based on um, Mr. Ho's um, views and decide whether Mr. Ho's views should be accepted. Three, if you do not agree with the views of um, the regulator, shouldn't shouldn't you ex shouldn't you study the uh, these issues with the regulator to find out why um, your views are so different from theirs? 
This is the supply to seek information. Well, the letterhead is from Communications Authority, the from the Secretary. On the report of how the CA Communications Authority dealt with uh, the application, the free applications is actually from the broadcasting uh, uh, from the Communications Authority uh, Office of the Communications Authority. And I uh, say that yes, uh, this uh, can rep this is on behalf of the chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tong. Thank you, Mr. Tong, for your three questions. First, the sequence of events. Well, this time round, we follow the um, the legislation in proceeding with this um, in case. Now, it was the uh, former broadcasting authority who th which came up with the recommendations, and the recommendations were submitted to the chief executive in council. When the C in council considered the matter, uh, they, they received the recommendations in July 2011 from the broadcasting authority. And of course, in the paper of the uh, Communications Authority, they have spelled out in detail the position of the Broadcasting Authority. Can we pause here? The four main points in the letter have they been spelled out in the report? The four main points. Uh, first one: static information of the applicant that shouldn't be a um, consideration. And secondly, um, there should be competition. We shouldn't just uh, safeguard the interest of existing operators. Thirdly, there's no need to rank the applications. Fourthly, um, there's never been request uh, for orderly and gradual approach in considering the applications. So these are the four main points. Uh, it, have they been spelled out in the report? If you don't agree to the four points, have you ever talked to the authority and asked them? Uh, uh, or if you want to change the policy, have you ever given them the opportunity to reconsider? 2011, July, the Communications Authority, uh, former, uh, the, that's the former Broadcasting Authority, at the time was called the Broadcasting Authority. At the time the report was uh, completed by the Broadcasting Authority, then we passed the legislation, so the name was changed. But anyway, the four points. Give, can you give me a bit of time to respond, please? Fine, as long as you make yourself clear. Now, in the LESCO brief, we have given the chronology of events. First, it was the former Broadcasting Authority which uh, submitted the uh, recommendations to the CE in the Council. And then uh, that's in the LESCO brief. The Broadcasting Authority has, of course, considered all those factors. Uh, your question it covers um, many different parts. Now, about the uh, gradual and orderly approach bit, the uh, it was the extra council that considered the viability, overall viability of the TV market. And then it came to a certain inclination, and then it disclosed the inclination to the three applicants seeking further representations from the three applicants. So when the Broadcasting Authority looked at the matter, there was not the element of a gradual and orderly approach. And then um, um, static information versus the dynamics of the market. Of course, uh, this uh, has been taken into account uh, by the Broadcasting Authority. I think you, you've uh, used up your time, six minutes. Uh, there will be a second round. He hasn't asked my question, but but you know that's how it is. I know you'll be concise because there are many more than ten members uh, in the queue. You have to let me conduct a meeting next to Mr. Charles Mock. Well, this um, technical department, like the communications authority, has scouts. Uh, is independent. It has the nerve to um, speak um, the truth. But I wonder if uh, Mr. Ho will be reappointed. It's a pity that uh, he chose not to come here to meet with us. Well, if um, uh, it's not a question of whether this, if this were issued yet a day earlier, then we could pass the PMP motion. So now it's not a case of seeking document. I think we should set up a select committee to investigate into the whole matter because um, uh, already the, it's like the conclusion is given here. Uh, that you know the paper spells out all the details clearly. So my first question: the four 
main criteria, definitely they were cooked up by the executive council. Is it the case that before or after they never talked to the uh, communications authority? And yesterday I also asked a question, a, sa a same question, that is uh, for um, mobile phones, um, uh, digital uh, audio, audio broadcasting, and so on. Was there any study to see uh, how many competitors the market could support? Was there any such study for those other industries? Because uh, the uh, former broadcasting authority never did so. Maybe now it's something new again, a new rule set by the Executive Council. Now, I would like to ask the two companies here. The government kept saying it would not uh, disclose um, commercial secrets uh, because um, the consultant's reports are commercial secret, uh, sensitive commercial information. Now, the third company is not here, unfortunately. Did the government ever ask you, uh, the two companies here, that uh, whether you are willing to disclose the information in the consultant's report, do you believe there is any sensitive commercial information in the report that cannot be disclosed? If so, what is the nature of such information? Mr. Ricky Wong? Well, I think I've uh, said already, my my company is uh, prepared to disclose all information contained in our application. Ms. Lee? Uh, we submitted an application. We also submitted supplementary information over the past few years, and it's true that some sensitive commercial information in the uh, submissions we made, and if uh, uh, you want the information to be disclosed, we would like to know what information ought to be disclosed, and then we'll consider it. Has the government ever asked whether you're willing to disclose the information, or if there is anything you would like to withhold? Have they ever asked you? My understanding is no. Not an issue that came up since the material was provided on a confidential basis and was to be treated that way by both sides. In other words, the government has never asked the three companies, and then they have used you as the shield. Now, for the four criteria, can I can I supplement? Uh, yeah, Miss uh, Ricky Wong would like to supplement. Yes, if I could supplement. All along, in the application process or in the presentations we made, the government told us all along that they would not keep it confidential. The information we submitted to them, that is from day one, they told us the government would not. When, how did they tell you that? I think they wrote to us. They told us they would. They told us they had no obligation to keep confidential our information. And do you have the obligation then? And what about that letter? Is that letter confidential? The letter itself. If the letter itself is not confidential, can you pr produce it? Let me make myself clear. The government has said that for the information we provide to them, perhaps uh, let's do it this way. Um, perhaps you allow the Hong Kong TV entertainment to finish first because you have interrupted, because you two you know, have been uh, uh, speaking. Please uh, be, ask for my permission before you speak, okay? Otherwise, uh, we can't conduct this meeting properly. Now, when we provided information, there was a confidentiality mechanism. It was under the um, principle of confidentiality that we submitted our business plan and a lot of uh, data. If I could um, s say this, Fantastic TV, uh, they wrote to say they wouldn't come. One of the reasons given was that uh, they believed they couldn't disclose some of the information, uh, sense com confidential commercial information. So that's by way of supplement. Secretary? If I could add a point, uh, perhaps my colleague could also explain um, Mr. Wong's point. That is, there's no, um, not, it's not kept confidential because I think we need to disclose information to certain parties. Perhaps I ask my colleague to explain. Deputy Secretary, from what I recall, uh, for information we collected, we ha have to confirm with them that uh, we are allowed to. Um, share this information with relevant colleagues in the processing of the applications. That's why we needed to make that statement. Next, Ms. Claudia Mo. Can I ask uh, Ricky Wong this? I wonder if you've had a chance to read this latest paper from the Communications Authority to the Legislative Council. I am absolutely shocked. 
Arabs, they are distancing themselves from the government completely. Static information cannot be used for uh, consideration in um, economically competitive environment. So the consultants, so the, um, they could not take account of the dynamic um, competitive environment and the analysis and, uh, uh, is based on static information. So now, if this paper was submitted uh, a day earlier, the voting result would be very different. But you think uh, Western District will let you off the hook? No, perhaps it's because of the Western District's influence. That's why the paper only reached you last night, Chairman. It's like the Defense uh, Council has uh, tailor-made this for you. Uh, do you f feel shocked? And uh, do you wonder if um, the CY Lung's government has exerted any pressure on CA? My third question is also for Ricky Wong. I've uh, written to the House Committee. I've asked to invoke the powers and privileges ordinance to summon you so that with legal pr protection, you can then disclose the four, in particular the four consultancy reports. Would you agree to do so? Three questions, Rick, Mr. Ricky Wong. So we only got two questions. Let me take the last question first. If uh, I am accorded legal protection, I will not be prosecuted of that speak. Yes, I'm more than happy to perform a duty as a citizen, and so I can speak what I can say. Mm. Your first question, Ms. Mo. I, I can't really answer you because yes, I do have some information, but again, now we haven't re signed any agreement. But uh, for all the documents uh, provided to us by the government, that's the uh, stamp confidential on them. So we haven't signed any agreement, but um, you know, morally. I don't think I can answer your first question. That is whether I knew in advance about these four points. I'm sorry, I can't answer your question. I didn't ask him, so there's no need for him to supplement. It's my time. Sorry. Um, paragraph 14 of the CA fee's paper. It says that the authority. Uh, was uh, mindful of the potential impact of new entrants on the incumbent operators, that is, uh, Asia Television Limited and TVB. So your, what is your understanding? Are they worried that uh, ATB would have to close? I don't think it matters what I think. I think what matters is how the EXCO members look at this, right? I can only say... We're still seeking legal advice. We are still not sure that uh, though we have not yet signed any agreement with the government to keep confidential information, uh, we, we, we are not sure if we could disclose information that's in our knowledge. Well, I will invoke the powers and privileges ordinance so we can summon you and give you legal protection. My question is that uh, the free economy of Hong Kong is uh, seriously undermined now. I'm not talking once again about the question of um, TV license. Do you think the um, justification is enough yourself, Ricky Wong? From the point of view of the public, of course, we will want the government to be transparent and uh, to to tell us uh, what they ought to tell us. I think Mr. Shiron wants to say something, right? Quick, A quick read of the, the BA letter. I think I draw your attention to paragraphs 13, 14, and 15, uh, particularly in, in paragraph 13. Uh, oh, my apologies. Um, it, on, from the, from the uh, CA's letter, which really goes back over what the BA was doing a couple of years ago, uh, paragraphs 13 to 15 appear upon a quick reading to be the, the key paragraphs, and I point your attention uh, to paragraph 13, where they essentially say that the consultant's uh, report is somewhere between stale and irrelevant, uh, and we agree with that. And the second point is that uh, there seems to be no limit on the number of, of licensees, and our view has always been that uh, it's not a question of one or two or three or even four, uh, that 
all applicants that are qualified should obtain licenses and then let the market decide. Thank you. Uh, just, just now it was uh, Ms. Claudia Mo's time and you did not allow him to respond, but I am um, the chairman. Uh, I have to let officials reply, and I now give uh, the maximum of one minute to Mr. Greg So. Thank you. What I'd like to say is that uh, in relation to the CA's letter, and um, I am shocked that uh, Ms. Mo find it shocking because uh, information supplied on the 15th of October to the to the electrical st stated that the stance of the CA is. Um, not to take into account sus uh, sustainability of individual applicants or existing operators. If you have read that document, you would not have been shocked because we have made that clear um, a while back. We, uh, you will be able to get the information without uh, electrical um, powers and privileges ordinance. Miss Mo, sorry, I did not look at you. No, it's not that. I forgot to remind you that you either speak in English or you speak you speak in um, Chinese. Don't use cocktail language, but uh, that is not translatable. We don't need the uh, powers and privileges ordinance. Okay, you have finished. Just now, Mr. Gregso, the secretary said that um, after the decision of it. Issue of uh, license issuance was made. Uh, there is a document. I recall that after the uh, press conference, we received the uh, electrical brief uh, an hour later. Well, whether it is relevant, it is uh, for you to decide. Next, Ms. Emily Lau. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I'd like to say that the liaison officer should not get involved in. Uh, affairs of the Hong Kong SAR. I don't know whether uh, it was uh, solicited. The secretary said that um, he was doing what he's supposed to do, but some members admitted that the liaison office approached them. And I think the uh, SAR should tell the liaison office that for our internal affairs, we don't need the liaison office to get involved. And you should do your you should do your job. You should not get someone else to help you. I think that this this destroys our high degree of economy of um, autonomy. Well, in relation of the communications authorities' information, uh, the secretary said that we knew that. Well, uh, I'll leave that I'll leave that alone. But the thing is that as long as uh, the criteria are met, then. A met, then they should be issued a license. And Mr. Albert Chen uh, wrote a let, wrote an article, and um, in in paragraph uh, 16 of uh, the uh, document, it says that uh, that is the case. In uh, paragraph 19, it says that at the beginning of February 2013, that is the letter of the uh, CA, the authority has not received further requests from the CA in Council, and. Um, or asked to reconsider, or did, nor did they reconsider their recommendations, and they have not been asked to reconsider the graduate and orderly approach or the, the ranking. But you now, all of a sudden, you say that um, you can't issue all three licenses. It should be less than that, and um, that it should be gradual and orderly. Well, it seems that uh, the uh, exco. That did not require uh, further assistance from the CA. That's why at the beginning of 2013, their views were not sought further. What is the reason, Secretary? Well, according to the BO Broadcasting Ordinance, the uh, BA will consider the applications and then make recommendations for the consideration of the ex goal. And opportunities will be given to the uh, organizations to make representations. And if uh, they are related to the applica applications, then we will um, give um, such representations to the BA for them to comment on. So, in terms of uh, procedural fairness and the flow of uh, and the flow, yes, the BA participated. And in terms of the representation, in terms of um, Gradual and orderly approach and the inclination and the representation of the three organizations. Well, 
if it is deemed that it is that it is not necessary for the authority to give further uh, views, then they will not be invited. But something has changed because all along there was a policy of no sealing, but then that was changed in relation to the procedure. We it was. Um, it was done in accordance with the legal advice, so it um, conforms with procedural fairness. Well, Ms. Lau has raised a very important point. At the beginning of uh, February 2013, the authority has not received further requests from the sea in Council to submit views or comment comments on the three applications. Um, the authority has not been asked by the sea in Council to consider the gradual and orderly approach nor the ranking of the three applications. Why did you not ask them? This is uh, the most important point because uh, that may be the basis of the de of the decision, and the basis has is different from that of the uh, of authority. Why did you not ask? Your time's up, Miss Lau. Perhaps uh, some mem other members may follow it up next, uh, Mr. Ray Chan. Chairman, we received from the CA um, a letter, five five page letter, and um, it is actually in conflict with the six page document of um, the administration. Well, let me put it this way: your decision has completely ignored the views of the CA. Paragraph thirteen of the CA's letter, that is, uh, although the consultant. Um, doubt the sustainability of uh, the three um, applications. The authority noted that the consultant's analysis was based on the static information provided by the applicants. So, uh, where did you get the dynamic information? On Wednesday, the secretary said that he did not have a crystal ball. Well, on um, paragraph 15, it says that. Uh, it is best in uh, public int in the terms of, in terms of public interest to recommend the grant of licenses to those which met the relevant requirements, and in considering, and uh, and you said that uh, a prime a primary consideration is the sustainability of the market. However, the authority uh, begs to differ. And um, you also said in your document that uh, with competition, then quality of programs will deteriorate and it will be detrimental to public interest. And that is not the view of the authority. And I'd like to hear from um, Mr. Ricky Wong. And you, you talk about a vicious competition and cutthroat competition uh, leading to a deterioration of a quality uh, of a program quality. Why, Mr. So? Mr. Chan, you may not understand. Uh, this is not in conflict because this is done under a legal framework. Uh, sections 8, 9, and 10 of the BO. The BA will make a recommendation for the CE in council to make a decision. And the decision is made. Uh, well, perhaps uh, you will give me some kind of information uh, um, that you mentioned. Let me finish. And this uh, procedure is uh, done according to the BO. Uh, when the authority made recommendation as to whether to grant a license, they think that uh, it, we, they should not use um, the sustainability of individual applicants or the uh, sustainability of the market as a primary consideration. As a result, they think that three licenses uh, should be granted. And when the EXCO c considered the applications, they took into account the uh, sustainability of the TV market. Is the compre is the overall sustainability of the TV market? And given that, um, the EXCO, after considering the consultant's report and the relevant factors think that the sustainability of uh, the market will be best served by an orderly and gradual approach. But what Mr. Chen said is, th uh, was that uh, the two documents are, com are conflicting. But the difference is that the CA thinks that they will not consider the overall uh, sustainability of the market as a consideration, nor would they consider the sustainability of individual applicants. But we think that uh, the exco think that uh, they have to take into consideration the overall sustainability of the entire market. 
and they inclined towards adopting a gradual and orderly approach. In the end, they made a decision based on these factors. Uh, Chairman, my un my question was not answered. So based on what uh, data, information, justification, uh, when they receive, when they arrive at a completely different conclusion, when the EXCO considered the issue, they have taken into account the overall sustainability of the market. Just as uh, the consultant's report pointed out, and I have mentioned this on a number of uh, occasions, according to information supplied by the um, applicant, Applic applicants, uh, the market uh, can sub sustain um, three um, uh, operators, four at uh, yes, well, but not five. Your time's up, Miss uh, Dennis Kwok. The CA's document shows that in the entire process, uh, the EXCO has made up its mind without taking anything into account. They have completely ignored the recommendation of the CA. Well, it says that um, their recommendation has not changed since July 2011. That's three licenses that will be, uh, should be issued. So between the February of 2012 to uh, February 2013, the, their recommendation remained unchanged. And the ex-DC in council have sought the views during that time uh, of the authority. However, the authority was not asked to consider the gradual and orderly approach, nor the ranking of the three applications. How come that you've been asking questions uh, for a year? When it comes to this decisive factor, this important factor, you did not ask the authority for their views. Why? Secretary, I've explained just now that um, when it comes to the CA, Well, after a presentations were made um, f under procedural fairness, sorry, don't waste my time, Secretary. You did not. There was no procedural fairness. Well, let him finish, please. It's exactly because uh, there was no procedural fairness. And for uh, these two very important factors, the gradual and orderly approach and the ranking, why did you not seek the view of the authority? Secretary, in relation to uh, the seeking of views of uh, the authority, we think that uh, in the in the process of uh, representation under procedural fairness and in the decision making process of the exco, they have taken into account um, the relevant factors, the overall sustainability of the market, and then they made a decision. Prior to making that decision, they invited um, the three applicants to make representation. So there are a lot more. Uh, the, the scope of consideration by the EXCO is, uh, is wider. Mr. So, you are at least a lawyer. Oh, I don't think we we should resort to personal attack. Secretary, you you have been talking about procedural fairness, but when you and pronounce someone dead, sorry, pause here. I don't think uh, Mr. Dennis Quat was personally attacking you. He was only venting. So um, we were talking about a legal point. Mr. So is a lawyer, so he knew full well what procedural fairness is. Let me expound. I don't think you know know it quite well. I don't want it to um, go on this way. Otherwise, it will be a mess. You both are lawyers. You both are barristers. Let me ask this question again for the final time. How come in during 2012 and 13, on a number of occasions, you saw the views of the authority? How come in terms of the two important factors, uh, gradual and orderly approach and the ranking, you did not seek the view of the authority? Why did you not? Well, I'd like to defer to my colleagues. Well, you only have 15 seconds because there are a lot of uh, members waiting to ask questions. Just ask, answer the question. Why not? Yes, I'll be brief. Before February 2013, we invited CA to respond to certain issues. That's because um, 
that uh, there was different view than the CA's recommendations. That's why we had to seek response from the CA. And as for the decision on orderly and gradual approach is a decision of the EXCO itself. It does not involve the uh, it does not invite any criticism on the original recommendation of the CA. Mr. Ma Fong Kwok. Now for the uh, CA's document, paragraphs 13 and 15, I believe are um, important. Paragraph 13, it says that the consultant uh, believes uh, there cannot be five players in the market. That would be a problem. And obviously, the communications authority did not agree with the consultant. Now, the government issued a statement. The government explained that Exco adopted the consultant's uh, views. So the Communications Authority and the Executive Council had different views in considering this matter, that's obvious. And at the end, the Exco adopted the consultant's um, views. So on the CA's disagreement to the consultant's findings, um, what uh, was the understanding of Exco? That's my first question. Second question. The CA said uh, they never did any ranking of the applicants. But uh, Mr. Ricky Wong kept saying that uh, in the consultancy report, he was not ranked third. The CA said it's uh, never done any ranking. So there was no recommendation from the CA on the matter on what basis did the government decide that uh, to pick two out of three? I'd like the government to respond, please. And uh, Mr. Ricky Wong's um, statement responds to the government six-page statement. Actually, Mr. Wong's uh, statement was 17 pages. I'd like the government to respond to the 17 pages. Well, I don't think he can answer so many questions. I think he can only answer your first two questions. For your last question, I think you have to wait till the second round. The reason for the difference, uh, I tried to explain that. Paragraph 13 of the CA's paper, the authority said that's not a primary consideration, that is the uh, overall sustainability of the market. That's not their primary consideration. They wouldn't look at the sustainability of individual applicants either. But the EXCO had a different position. EXCO believed the overall sustainability of the market was important because um, we, the EXCO wanted to see orderly and healthy development of the market. They didn't want any negative impact. And for this reason, EXCO adopted the gradual and orderly approach. In other words, um, EXCO was inclined to issue less than three licenses. And then uh, EXCO eventually decided to issue two licenses. Now, on the position of the CA, uh, they wanted to leave it to the market. That's why there was no need for ranking. They, because the CA's recommendation was to issue licenses to all three applicants. But then EXCO eventually adopted the gradual and orderly approach, so it went by some criteria. Uh, that is the four assessment criteria in the consultant's report. I'm sure you're familiar with those criteria by now. And uh, on the basis of those criteria, the three applicants were uh, allowed to make representations before EXCO made a decision. So EXCO's considerations covered a rider scope. Now, the um, CA gave the recommendations in 2011, and uh, they were not, and and then um, at the time there were no representations. But uh, the EXCO was the body to make the decision. The EXCO considered the CA's uh, recommendations, the consultant's report, the 11 factors, and the representations of the applicants, etc., before they came up with their decision. Can I follow up, please? I uh, took up 10 seconds of time. Yes, please, go ahead. So EXCO made two decisions. First decision is that uh, in uh, designing to issue two licenses, it did not uh, take uh, uh, advice from the consultant. And uh, and second decision is that uh, EXCO believed um, EXCO 
uh, a CA couldn't help them decide on which two licenses to issue, right? Now, you mean the um, CA, not the consultant? Yes, CA. I think the main difference is on the sustainability of the market. Exo considered the sustainability of the market first, and on that basis, it adopted a gradual and orderly approach to deal with it. I think you're repeating yourself, Secretary. I don't think you need to go on further. It's uh, regrettable that uh, there's no one from the CA because uh, if there are differences of views, uh, you have you have the opportunity to explain why the government did not agree with the recommendations of the CA. But the CA doesn't have a chance to explain their, its position. So I think it's really regrettable that uh, the CA is not represented here. Next, Mr. Minung Singh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are three organizations represented here. I have three questions for each of them. The first question. Uh, the paper submitted to us, um, there's not a date, there's just a month, uh, in November. I think it's pers and on purpose, there's not a date. Is it because the paper uh, the paper was uh, long prepared and you had to wait till we finished our meeting yesterday before you submitted the paper? That's why you didn't dare to give a date? That's the uh, paper from CA. I think that's uh, one observation we should take note of. Anyway. Um, the the tax came eventually. Uh, there's no change. Is that um, the CA does not agree there should be just two licenses? CA supported three licenses. Now, I don't see anything special there because the uh, uh, that's the position of the authority and is entitled to his own position. Can I just ask the government this uh, paragraph thirteen? It says here. Uh, the sh con the um, sustainability of individual applicants should not be a primary consideration. Even if it's not a primary consideration, would the government think is an important consideration? That's the first question. Second question is for Mr. Ricky Wong. Uh, I'm quite surprised. Ms. Claudia Mo asked whether there's any political oppression. But actually, um, much earlier on, Mr. Ricky Wong already said that it's nothing to do with um, politics. So, on Ms. Claudia Mo's um, point, um, perhaps it's um, groundless. Uh, what is your view? Do you believe there are political considerations? And on uh, um, liaison officer, uh, the liaison office contacting us that um, uh, the liaison office uh, is concerned about our local affairs. Uh, why is that um, interference with um, local affairs? It doesn't seem that uh, that um, Dr. Leung voted differently after liaison office talked to him. So what interference is there? And the third question is to ask the um, um, operator as to provide free TV service. Are you going to send a team to the central government offices or to the Leshko Square and give um, notice of programs you're going to produce, or would you do more publicity so the public uh, will learn about your new product programs? And uh, then people in the sector may also know whether there's room for further development. Should you not uh, promote um, um send out a positive message, wouldn't it do more good that way? Three questions. The first question: Exco should consider the overall sustainability, the overall sustainability of the free TV market. Thank you, Mr. Ricky Wong. Uh, politics, I said. Uh, from uh, clearly, from what I understand, has nothing to do with Beijing or the Central People's Government. Now, whether there's any political oppression, I have to quote uh, page 16 of this book again. Now, many people, when they talk about uh, political and economic issues in Hong Kong, they just speak out of impression. Many do that. Men, um, opinion leaders in Hong Kong and um, uh, people's representatives or those in the political circle, because of their limited experience and exposure, they are getting out of touch with reality in society. So, do you, so Ms. Mo must note whether her observation is out of her impression. Uh, yes, now the operator, please. Prospective free TV operator. 
That is, would you come to the central government offices to publicize the programs you're going to launch? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've explained our strategy. We are now working full steam to prepare the launch of our station. Uh, what is most important is that uh, we must first agree on the licensing conditions with the government. Now, we would like to start a, a publicity campaign soon because we have already produced many programs and we are also going to produce more programs. So we would like uh, more exchanges with the public and step up our publicity. Next, Mrs. Regina Ip. Mr. Chairman, I didn't raise my hand. Thank you for bearing me in mind. No problem. Many will want to speak for the second round. So next, Mr. Sitho. Short question for Mr. Ricky Wong, the book you refer to. Now, he described the ideal Hong Kong. He is, um, mentioned many of his visions. But from your own experience in applying for a TV license, do you think they tally? Ricky Wong. Now the Hong Kong I have in mind. Hong Kong um, so encourages competition. There's no need to pick two out of three. And Hong Kong people accept the rule of the game that only the, survive, uh, the fittest survives, because only then we could promote um, um, progress in society. I always thought that. Uh, uh, that's how our society will develop in line with what's the ideals in the book, so I'm disappointed. Now you have this um, uh, sad experience now. Now you read the book again. Do you think uh, uh, he's, it's all fabrication, it's just a lie in the book? Uh, do you think you should still uh, be believe in the content of the book or even the author? Do you think you could still believe in this author? Mr. Ricky Wong, page tw 233 of the book. When we uh, faced with adversities, we should dare to hope. And uh, when we are in the face of difficulties, we have to dare to hope. So we still have hope. And I think that we could keep moving forward. Page 142 and page 141, you quoted from those two pages earlier. Do you still agree that uh, he's speaking the truth? Now it's hard for me to judge. So you can't judge even someone as smart as you. And Ms. Sito asks whether you still trust this person, uh, C.Y. Leung. Uh, I can't ju uh, judge. Well, I won't uh, force Mr. Wong to give an answer. I don't think we don't need um, powers and privileges, ordinances, protection, and you can still give the answer, actually. Now, now a question for the Secretary. The Communications Authority is, is a statutory um, body. It um, acts in accordance with the Broadcasting Ordinance. It's um, the, to give advice to the Executive Council. But then you said the CA did not look at the uh, gradual and orderly approach. Is it because the CA did not act in accordance with the law, or is it the case that the CA and Council did not act in accordance with the law? Because the Broadcasting Ordinance says that uh, for people who could be granted um, applications, uh, who could be granted licenses, there's never any mention of gradual and orderly approach. How come all of a sudden you are adopting this gradual and orderly approach? So who is not uh, acting in accordance with the law here? Secretary, well, we consider the development of a market from the point of view of public interest, and these are factors that uh, the EXCO could consider. So it's on the basis of an objective consultancy report. Uh, we consider that uh, there's need to, uh, for healthy and orderly development in the market. Now, this is um, our forum. Mr. Chairman, um, do, am I allowed a fair time to answer questions? I want to ask, in the Broadcasting Ordinance, where does it say gradual and orderly approach? Where do we find those words in the Broadcasting Ordinance? Under the Broadcasting Ordinance, it says that um, uh, the rec uh, recommendations will be made by the uh, authority, and then CA in Council will make a decision. The CA also says that uh, they don't have uh, the, to, the duty to protect interests by maintaining the uh, status quo of the incumbent operators. So there is uh, no, no duty for them to protect ATV, which is uh, losing money every year. Secretary, 
the CA or the EXCO uh, does not have to protect the interest of a particular operator. They uh, take into account the overall sustainability of the market. In paragraph 14, we see that uh, the authority was mindful of the potential impact of new entrant on the incumbent operators, that is ATV and TVB. Next, um, Mr. Michael Tian. Two questions. Let me start with a simple one first. Paragraph 19. The CA said that uh, the the EXCO did not ask the authority to consider the gradual and orderly approach nor um, to rank the three applications. I'd like to ask the secretary, uh, does the law state that uh, if new elements are um, added uh, to considerations of the decision, are they required to revert to the um, authority to seek their view before a decision is made. So are there any requirements that you will have to give them an opportunity before you make an before you make a decision, Secretary? We have sought legal advice before we proceed before we proceeded. We follow um what is required under the law, and under the law, it doesn't say that we have to uh, get a view from the authority before we make a decision. So we have acted in accordance with the law. Yes, understand. So you have not breached um, the the law. My second question: the authority has uh, mentioned a number of points uh, that uh, the consultants finding that the market may not be able to sustain a total of five players, then that uh, sustainability uh, is not to be considered, and that um, as long as uh, applicants meet the relevant requirements, they should be given a license. And there has been a lot of discussions. People think that um, the new policy that is gradual and orderly approach is not a right decision. And in order to gain wider public support, will you review the gradual and orderly approach? Uh, if we accept a four operators, why is it for the EXCO to decide which four? Why not leave it uh, at the market? Um, you can have five or six operators in the market. Some will be squeezed out, and in the end, there will be four. For four of the the best qualities, would you consider re uh, reviewing it? And this is not a new policy. Uh, the policy remains unchanged. This time, we adopt a gradual and orderly approach by issuing two licenses first. We don't rule out the possibility that at the right time we will introduce more um, applicants. So, so far, there is still no ceiling on the number of licenses. And under the gradual and orderly approach, we consider a number of factors, including the analysis of the consultant. When there are new applications, uh, we believe that we will consider the market situation before a decision is made. Let me clarify. I still have time. You adopt a gradual and orderly approach, and you add this element, and a decision is made. And now you see how the re how the market has reacted. The majority of the public um, do not agree with this approach. Now you've heard their voice. Looking forward, will you consider adopting the recommendations of uh, the authority, that is, as long as an applicant meets the four criteria, a license will be granted, and it's for the market to decide who is to stay, or you are not going to review it. When the EXCO consider the four criteria, they consider the comparative competitiveness of the three applicants. We also have to take into account the number of applicants and whether the gradual and orderly approach is to be adopted. We have to take into account the number of applicants, the market situation, and other factors. So it's difficult for me to give you an answer now. Sorry, your time is up, Secretary. There are still four members in the first round. Um, uh, we have limited time. Five members who would like to five members would like to speak. Now you would want to speak again. So for the first round, we have uh, Long Kwok Hong, Paul Zhe, James To, Wu Chi Wai, Re Regina Ip. And for the second round, two, member, uh, two minutes for each member. Uh, 
in the first round with uh, UC, we will add UC Wing as well. I called your name. Don't worry. You will be given the opportunity to speak first. Mr. Long Kwa Hong, Chairman, I have a question for the Secretary. You said that you have uh, sought legal advice according to the law. And you said that before the um, EXCO made a decision, they sought the advice of the authority. And once you've done that, um, there is no need to seek their advice again. 2012, you did so. And in 2013, there is no need to seek their views again. Is that right? And that is your understanding of the law, right? You want him to answer yes or no? I have answered you. Perhaps I will go through the whole procedure again. No, just yes or no. Is that your understanding? When a decision of a gradual and orderly approach is adopted, according to the law, you don't have to ask the authority again. But you think that, um, well, you've asked them for their views, and you don't have to ask them again to make your decision. Yes. Is that your understanding? Uh, member, do you mean that uh, once the gradual and orderly approach is adopted, that you ignore the recommendations of the authority and you come up with two new criteria? You said that uh, after taking into account the market situation, you need a gradual and orderly approach. That's a change. So you have taken into account the market situation. You think that um, they have missed one factor, and you take that into account and you adopt a gradual and orderly approach. If it's not a change, what is? You said it yourself. You said that you have uh, considered a new factor. Uh, please repeat your question. He said that he has uh, considered the recommendations of the authority, but they did not agree. And they have taken into account the market situation and decided that a gradual and orderly approach should be adopted in, to open the market. And during that point of time, you think that there is no need to seek the view of the authority again. Is that right? Uh, right, you're right. That's fine. You think there is uh, no need to ask them again. I tell you, this is white. This is white glove. They are asked for their views. Say, well, would you like to go for dinner tonight? Yes. Well, you have to pay two million dollars. But without asking them, you uh, go ahead to book a table. So even on the point of law, you might have uh, es escaped uh, scot-free, but it, you are still guilty because uh, this is not natural justice. And Mr. Ricky Wong said that well, it may be allowed. Uh, it, um, it may be allowed under the law, but there may still be civil liability. He's a businessman. And he considered moral issues. And you are the official. You considered the law? You see, Mr. Ricky Wong is the whiz kid. And he talks about uh, morality. He talked about a document um, being stamped confidential. So he, uh, he chose not to. He chose uh, not to disclose it. So, well, I um I have sought the legal advice from a famous um from a famous uh, lawyer who has died long ago. I sought his advice in my dream. So um, I now want to ask you the question: Would you like to cry now? You are a barrister, but Ricky Wong is a businessman, and you led a team. You only talk about legality. Then yes, you should be a superintendent of the police. You should stay as uh, you. Sh you should stay a lawyer. What are you doing here? I think the whole administration is a waste of space. No, this is not venting. This is an. Uh, this is an, an allegation. Uh, you have finished, but I have to answer the secretary. Well, whether it is venting or not, it's not for you to comment. It's for me to decide. And if I think he's excessive, I would have kicked him out. I think so far it's acceptable. Next, Mr. Porter. I have a question for Mr. Ricky Wong. You are very efficient, and very quickly you come up with uh, 17 pages uh, in response to what the administration has said. And when you are compiling the information, what uh, information did you take into account? They are all in the public domain. Most of them. Well, the administration 
has a gazetted information of the three applicants. Uh, the applicant and the applicants are um, listed companies, so I can get the information from the annual report. Did any information appear in the consultant's report? No. Mr. Wong, I'd like to ask you: Did you read the guidance note? So you are fully aware that in this regard there is a discretion on the part of the administration, and that there is a no uh, duty of them to explain. Yes, I have a question for Mr. So. Prior to today. When did you receive the document proper, not the letter of the CA, the explanation of their decision? When did you receive that, Secretary? Yesterday, after I have uh, finished the second motion debate, I received that when I went to the office. Mr. Porter, a question for the Secretary. In the guidance note, it said that uh, the CA may accept um, applications all through the year. What's your understanding? I've explained in the ledge call. The whenever there is application, the CA will deal with the applications accordingly. So there is no, no such thing as a deadline. Ever since the start of the policy. The CA is ready to accept applications. If today Hong Kong TV makes an application again, will the application be accepted? I believe that the CA will deal with, will process the applications when, once they are received. And about the service rollout. The timing is one of the factors, and if Hong Kong TV can roll out the service say, in such a short time, will this be an important factor uh, being considered if they submit an application again? If you refer to the guidance note of the CA, then coverage, service coverage, and technical and uh, technical um, capabilities are factors to be considered. Mr. Wong. The license issue, a license criteria, is, is is the information included in the guidance note. Is it binding? Uh, what document are you referring to? The guidance note. The guidance note. The provisions in the guidance note. Is it binding? Are they binding on both the administration and applicants? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the application will form part of the license. Mr. Wong, I'm not uh, a lawyer. I have to seek legal advice. I still have some time. Secretary, according to your understanding, under BO, Chief Executive in Council, do, are they required to accept? The recommendation of uh, the CA before they make a decision. According to the law, the CA will make uh, recommendations, and then the uh, chief executive in council will make a decision. And um, we are talking about two uh, different powers, and that is very clear. The final decision is to be made by the chief executive in council. Next, Mr. James Toll. I have a question for the secretary. Nine two section nine two of the BO. The authority shall consider applications. Um, and make recommendations uh, to the chief executive in council. And section ten, uh, it says that the chief executive in council, um, after considering the recommendations made pursuant to section nine two, will make a decision. And just now you said that you don't have to abide by the recommendations of the authority. Yes, on the legal point of view, I agree with you. But in May, on the fourteenth of May this year. When you notify the three applicants, well, paragraph nine of the CA's document says that uh, you did not seek the view of the authority on gradual and orderly approach, and the authority was not asked to rank the three applications. In other words, under section ten one of the ordinance. You could not consider 
the recommendations of the authority. Well, because of the gradual and orderly approach, it may be zero, one, two, or three licenses. In the case of three licenses, well, that is the recommendation of the uh, CA. What if it's one? What if it's uh, one or two? Did you seek their view? Say, well, if you are going to issue two licenses, um, you ask them to rank. Uh, yes, you may not uh, follow what they recommended, but you should have asked. You should ask them for their view if less than three licenses were issued, and if. It's going to be less than three. Um, should you not have asked them to maybe rank rank them so that you can choose which two or which one to issue uh, to be issue a license? Yes, you may not have to uh, do exactly as the CA said, but according to the law, you should ask this question of the authority. Secretary, I made it very clear in my answer, and I have sought legal advice that uh, there is no need for us to go to the uh, to ask the authority for a new recommendation. And if you refer to ten one of the ordinance, the chief executive in council may grant a license subject to such conditions as he thinks fit. So the legislative uh, intent is very clear that the decision is to be made by the exco. Oh, no. Okay, you impose conditions whether you issue one, two or three licenses. Yes, you could impose conditions, but then doesn't mean that you impose condition of whether you issue one, two or three ordinances. So that's not how it's read. Section 9.2. It says that the authority shall make recommendations to the executive council. If the executive council then decides it will not issue two, three licenses, it might just issue one or two or even no licenses. Then maybe he should go. They should go and ask a CA what their views are, and which has the high score. Uh, because under section section ten one, yes, you don't need to follow it. But uh, in terms of procedure, shouldn't you go back and ask them if you are to issue less than three licenses, what their views are and how they might rank the applicants? Shouldn't you have asked them? Now, Mr. James Toe was not here in the room. I've explained many times the uh, factor of uh, overall sustainability of the market. Yes, I follow the point about the sustainability, but that's the one of the consideration of the CA as well, is it not? If you refer to the CA's paper, that that factor has been taken into consideration. If only one or two licenses are to be issued, which two should get the licenses so that should, there would be less of a Im, an impact on the sustainability of the market as um, measured by EXO? Shouldn't that be a factor? Shouldn't you consult the CA? The CS has already considered the consultants' and analysis, and the CE in council has already considered uh, the uh, recommendations of the CA, uh, and the CA has obviously con uh, considered the analysis. But as I said, XQ has considered the overall sustainability of the government of the market in making its decision. Mr. Wuchiwai. Well, with all this discussion, it just goes to show that Exco is uh, can do as it pleases. Now, Exco could um, issue an unlimited number of um, licenses because that's the government's policy. But now it's become gradual and orderly approach. The new assessment criteria of the CA would it uh, become gradual and orderly approach in giving advice to the government? That's my first question. And secondly, even if you go by the existing practice, now you say at this point you can issue free licenses, but you don't don't rule out the possibility in future. So, but what are the criteria? Under what circumstances, uh, or what would be the market condition be like before you might uh, grant the fourth, fifth, or sixth licenses? Uh, because. Uh, what 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 is the CA doing here? If there is no change to this criteria, Secretary, now Mr. Wu called this the new mechanism. I wouldn't want to describe it this way. 
now this time uh, because we have received three applications and we decided to adopt a gradual and orderly approach to deal with the applications. I've explained the process many times over just now. So isn't the government wasting the time of the company's authority? Please allow me the chance to explain. Please continue, Secretary. So Exco was inclined to adopt a gradual and orderly approach in dealing with the free applications before Exco made the final decision. It communicated its inclination to the three applicants and sought their representations. After having considered the representations before Exco made a decision, so the whole process was fair and impartial. They considered these factors uh, before they made a decision. Exco, that is. Now, gradual and orderly approach uh, would it be one of the criteria that uh, CA would have to consider? In future, that is a gradual and orderly approach. Well, I try to explain that this time we adopted the gradual and orderly approach to deal with the free application. This in the light of the prevailing market uh, condition. That's why we, um, and then that's why we then invited representations and on receiving it, representations and we made a decision. Now, in future, if there are new applications, we will deal with it. Uh, by the gradual and orderly approach, well, it would be hard to say. Maybe if there's just one applicant, and then we have to look at the prevailing market condition. Uh, it's hard to say now how we will deal with applications in future. If that's the case, what sort of uh, basis should the uh, CA go by in considering applications? Because CA may receive applications any time in a year. So what criteria should it go by then? Obviously is uh, in accordance with the le legal framework and um, um the licensing policy of the government is well known so uh, ca will um uh, has already published a um, guidance note after consultation so uh, as usual we'll go by the guidance note now mr wu if you refer to the letter of the ca you can see that uh, the, the Considerations have been spelled out clearly. Apart from the governance guidance note of the CA, the CA is also considered other factors. I think the secretary, secretary is trying to um, waste my time. I'm saying, asking whether the gradual and orderly approach would become one of the criteria in the consideration of future applications. Obviously, he did not answer your question, Mrs. Regina, but I was out uh, for a while. Uh, I don't know if I've repeated uh, my, this question, Mr. Ricky Wong. If so, please let me know. Now, there are a lot of reports that there's an official who promised to give you a license. Uh, uh, could you name that person? Um, you know, in what tone did uh, this official tell you that a license would be issued to you? When did it happen? I think it should be 2010. It was in 2010 at the Murray Building in the official's office. At that time, the way it was put was, as long as my our company could meet the statutory conditions for issuing a license, then the government would have no reason not to grant us a license. Ricky Wong, could you answer which months of 2010? Because you uh, submitted an application in early 2011. We have to get the time frame right. Our information is that your company submitted an application in early 2011. It was uh, December 2009, actually, also even earlier. So you, you, you said... Uh, you mean you've already submitted application and then the official told you, so it was to encourage you. Yes, it was the meeting after the application was submitted. Now, it was a huge investment. You have your own legal advisors. But you know that um, the um, authority of uh, issuing licenses lies with the Chief Executive Council in accordance with the Broadcasting uh, Ordinance. Now, would you were you surprised that an official say that to you, regardless of his or her rank? Well, I wasn't surprised because he they they were just he he or she was just explaining to me what the established policy was. 
Now, in the CA's letter, it's stated clearly too uh, that as long as we could meet the statutory requirements, the license would be issued. That's the legal advice we obtained, and at the time, that senior official also explained the same to us. And I, I should say also, up to this point, we never asked the government for any compensation. No, no, we're not doing that. We just want to seek justice. We just want the government to explain why it has changed its policy and why I was um, left out. Now, I'm surprised. I'm sure the official who met you couldn't be someone of a junior rank. Now, someone with experience in the government would uh, would should know uh, should, that uh, this should not be said to you because of uh, what is in the ordinance. Uh, Secretary, do you know about this case? Was there any record which official met with Mr. Wong and said this to him or mechanically say that as long as you met the conditions, the license will be granted? But, you, but he wasn't the secretary yet, but, but I, I worked at the Marais building. Now, but there should be record. Well, I could only say for myself that I never said this to Mr. Ricky Wong, but in accordance with the legislation, all the uh, guidance note it does say that um, uh, it, it's about um, one of the considerations is the overall benefits to be brought to the industry. So uh, that's why it is considered the overall sustainability of the market. But I think the government should um, investigate into it which official dared go beyond his or her powers to give such guarantee. You have no time left, just four minutes. Many are. Uh, are in the queue, and now meeting will only go up to 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Sorry, not 6 p.m. 7 p.m. I mean. 7 p.m. sharp. Okay. Let me say this again, as we need to leave some time to deal with the um, motion signed by eight members. For members of this panel, you have to vote, and so you need to stay behind. Uh, for the first round, we still have Mr. Yu Si Wing and Mr. Stephen Ho. And the second round, um, um, please indicate quickly Ronnie Tong, Claudia Mo, Charles Mok, Emily Lau, Ma Fung Kwok, Paul Che, Lan Kwok Hong. Who else would like to speak in uh, for the second time? M Ray Chen, who else? And Chen, well, then it's f the first time for you. So please, can I ask for your cooperation? We do need to leave some time. Uh, you know, it's um, re uh, required by the rules of procedure. We have to deal with the motion before the end of the meeting. So for a second round, two minutes each only. Next, Mr. Yu Si Wing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask PCCW, or, or actually that's uh, Hong Kong TV Entertainment, you're going to invest a 1.3 billion dollars in free TV service. How many staff do you plan to hire? Um, and would you give priorities to um, HKTVN staff made redundant? Second question is for the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau. Now, there have been a lot of views expressed on the licensing issue by the public and many others. Would you consider um, taking, you know, advancing your review so you could consider uh, other licenses sooner if you have such plans. Mr. Wong, if uh, the government has such an intention that for its um, gradual and orderly approach there would be a, a reconsideration, then would uh, Mr. Wong consider submitting a new application? Now, there are three questions. First question is for Ms. Lee of Hong Kong TV Entertainment. Second question is for the Secretary. The third question may be Mr. Ricky Wong needs not answer it. Ms. Janice Lee, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, uh, in the past few years, we've been um, actually hiring talents. Uh, there are now 1,500 people on the team. Before we did not get a license, but uh, when we get a license, some of our staff will uh, switch to the free TV department, and we will also be hiring more. We'll probably hire an extra four to five hundred staff members. Mr. Secretary, the second question, Mr. Yu, would you give priority to Hong Kong TV network staff? Actually, we um, issued a notice. We said we welcome 
star from the Hong Kong TV network to join us. And in fact, we welcome all talents uh, from Hong Kong. We'll meet with some of them. Actually, we've met some of their staff already. Secretary, as I mentioned, if there are new applications, I'm sure the Communications Authority will handle the applications in accordance with the law, and then the Executive Council will also then deal with the case. Uh, uh, we'll have to look at the prevailing market condition, but at this point, we can't say what the market condition would be like then. So, Mr. Wong doesn't need to answer your third question then. Next to Mr. Uh, Albert Ho, rather. There's another member who's raised his hand. Now, you walk in and out and you raise a hand as you like, then it's tough. Uh, Christopher Chong, I'll just let you have two minutes uh, because we've already drawn the line, okay? Do you agree? No? Don't um, throw a tantrum. Okay, as long as you agree, that's fine. Next, Mr. Stephen Ho. Stephen Ho. Now, uh, we've heard uh, the Secretary answer many questions. Now, when CE in Council made the decision, must it be based on the report of the CA? You mentioned the uh, CA's recommendations only, but is it based on the CA report? If they did not accept their report, uh, they, of course, EXCO didn't have to go back and seek the views of CA. But uh, uh, is EXCO required to explain the decision to the CA? If not, then uh, how do do they deal with the their relationship with the uh, CA? Another question. Now, according to the Guardian's note, there is no need to disclose the reasons of the decision. Is that a fact? Uh, two questions. I, I still have another question. If uh, the Guardian's note uh, should be aware, the, the, the applicant should be aware of the Guardian's note, right? If they ask for the cost of theft, is it not inappropriate? Or how would you interpret that? My third question. No, that's, you, that's the fourth question. It's the same point. Policy, you say, it's never changed. But someone has uh, someone said that you've moved to go post. If they ask you for the cost of death, and if you give them the cost of them, then would you have changed the rules of the game as well? Secretary, uh, for the questions, you've actually answered them before, but uh, now you have a chance to uh, play your um, audio record again. Now, Section 10.1 of the Broadcasting Ordinance is stated clearly here that the Chief Executive and Council have to consider recommendations made pursuant to Section 9.2. So the uh, law states that uh, first a CA will make recommendations and then a CA would consider the recommendations. The, those are the wordings in the law. And in this case, uh, second question, uh, within the scope of the confidentiality rule of the EXCO, we have tried our best to explain the case, but of course I don't want to repeat uh, um, points I've already made in the 12-hour debate in EXCO, in, in LegCo. Thank you. Ms. An Chang. Mr. Wong. Yesterday, in Electrical Council meeting, you know that uh, there was uh, a motion to invoke a LCPMP ordinance. I v voted against it, and the motion was not carried. I think you know that even if the motion was carried, there will be it will be no help to for you to get a license, and even with PNP. Um, Confidential documents may not still be produced, and it will only aggravate the relations between uh, the executive and the legislature. And I think we should uh, take do a uh, take a positive view on on this, and to look forward. I know that uh, you are very smart, and you are brimming with ideas. You are indeed. Um, a very clever person. Of course, we would like you to get a license. We believe that with a license, you will be able to create a new world for the for the sector. I have some questions to ask you. You said that an official welcome, invited, or encouraged you to make an application. Did you wonder why 
that person would uh, invite or encourage you. There are a lot of other uh, rich and wealthy in Hong Kong. Why weren't they approached? Is it because uh, you were in telecommunications? Have you finished with your question? I have four minutes. I know, but have you finished with your question? No, I still have a number of questions. I, uh, I asked them all now? Yes. Yes, if you, if you want some answers, he may only have 30 seconds. Two, I want to know why you, want, you wanted to sell the um, telecommunications company. Uh, actually, you've sold it. The third question. You said openly that the seller has given you an undertaking for you to use the network for free over a 20-year period. So was is there an exit clause? Say, for example, um, you're given a place to live in, but when the, how, when the unit is sold, you will not be able to live in it. You have one minute. Uh, you uh, can you grasp what she said? Yes, I'd like to first clarify that uh, since the fifteenth of uh, October, when the bad news came out, our company has never asked for a license to be given to us. We've been fighting for justice to find out the the, the cause of our death. Since the fifteenth, I've never said that I wanted to get a license. It doesn't matter that you don't give us a license, but Hong Kong needs justice. And back in 2009, in December, I was in Beijing. I attended a national studies course. I remember that. And the senior official called me, called my office, and it so happened that um, I I was I walked back into the office and I called the official back and it was said that well make an application because I think that uh, you are um, a very creative um, person you have a very good track record and I sold the company because I needed money to invest in a television service and there is no exit clause for the first round. Members have asked questions and uh, made comments. For the second round, let me read out the names. I wonder, um, well, let's see if uh, there are any other members who would like to ask questions, and then I will um, decide on the time. Ronnie Tong, Claudio Mo, Chow Smo, Emily Lau, Ma Fung Kwok, Pa Te, Long Kok Hong, Ray Chen, Christopher Chung, anyone else? Long Sing, anyone else? En Chang, Virginia Ip. James Toe, and it's just a um, a point of order. What if we reach seven o'clock? There are so many of us. Do we have only ten seconds? Well, that's why I wa I was going to say that uh, I would ask you whether we should extend it. I was going to say fifteen minutes, and that would not be enough. Um, and I will. I was. Um, I'm going to ask for thirty minutes. People may not agree. If it's, if it's going to be an extension of 15 minutes, perhaps we will complete the second round and then we will have two more meetings. That will be better because uh, this is a very important issue. It's of public concern. We should not rush through. If we only have 20 seconds, that won't do. No, I did not say anything about 20 seconds. Well, if uh, it's only 20 seconds, I'm not going to raise my hand. You will at least have two minutes. But I need to first ask you about an extension. I was going to go for 15 minutes, and now I'm going to ask for another 15 minutes. So we will finish at half past seven, and then I'll work out the time. It's very simple. Do you understand? Don't complicate matters. But it's a comment. I, I want to make a comment. I am concerned that uh, since the, there is a long queue, we may not be able to deal with the motion. So perhaps uh, we deal with the motion, and if there is time left with the members' consent, we will extend it for 30 minutes, and then, the Chairman, you will decide about the allocation of time for a second round. Wouldn't it be better? Well, Mr. Tong says that uh, we should first deal with the motion of uh, the eight members with time left. 
Um, we assume that uh, the time and the ending time is uh, 7:15, and then if that is not uh, enough, uh, we will have another extension till 7:30 for members uh, to speak. But the meeting will end at 7:30. Any other views? We will deal with the motion of uh, the eight members. It's tabled in front of you. But before I deal with that, I need to seek the consent of Ms. Claudia Mo because she gave a letter to the chairman of the HC to invoke the LCP and P ordinance to set up a select committee. And the suggestion. Well, I can tell you uh, that it, um, that is going to be dealt with in the House Committee. But I still need to see, seek the view of the of uh, Miss Claudia Mo to read out the letter because it may be for your reference before you vote on the motion. And if you think that is not related, there is no need. I won't read it out, Miss Mo. I did not s sign the. Motion, because I think that we should not waste any more time. I was afraid that there won't be enough time to discuss this, but the wordings of the two motions are similar. But in mine, I mentioned about the um, the attack on our free market economy. I have to say that uh, we need to get the consent of Miss Mo because uh, that is uh, submitted to the House Committee. And now I have something similar. And, to, and the two together will be two uh, requests for PNP. But we will deal with this one. And yours is not related. But I just uh, d tell you that for your for information. Mr. Wong Ting Kwong. Miss Mo's letter is addressed to the House Committee, but not to you, Chairman. I'm not asking you to deal with it. I just tell you that uh, this is here, and the two motions are of similar wording. So we deal with the one related to the ITBP. Well, in front of you, you will find a motion. So Chen Chi Chun, Emily Lau, Charles Mark, James To, Xin Chong Kai, Ronnie Tong. I don't have it. The clerk will give you a photocopy immediately if you don't have the motion in front of you. Well, here goes the motion. This is the wording. Uh, the panel under the uh, LCP and P ordinance Cap 3A2, Section 9.2, to empower the ITBP to exercise uh, Section 9.1 um, to require the Hong Kong TVN chairman uh, or the um, um, director or the uh, person with the, del with the power delegated to produce documents related to the application for free to air television license um the related documents of records um chan chi chun uh sit ho emily lao chao smog sin uh chong kai ronnie tong long kwok hong mr pose we don't have a legal advisor here but i'd like to get some clarification on the legal point please go ahead we had a lengthy uh, debate, and the motion was voted on. Well, although the uh, person involved is different, but if the issue involved is substantially the same, well, last time, well, it was uh, for secretary. Next time, it may be for the uh, under secretary, and then the next time, the deputy secretary. Then we will have many motions. I'd like to get some views of, from the legal advisor. ROP uh, Rule Thirty Two in relation to decisions of the council made previously. Perhaps I will defer to the legal advisor. Uh, under that, uh, it says that when a, a council has uh, made a decision on a motion, then uh, during the same term on the same um, issue, a motion is not to be moved. 
So in relation to this uh, motion of uh, eight members, is it the same as the one moved in the council? I defer now to the legal advisor. Just now, the chairman has read out. It says uh, a specific question, not a subject matter. So if you compare the motion, the wording of uh, the motion in front of you with that of the council, the major difference is the person involved. Um, the one in the council is to require the secretary to produce documents, whereas this one uh, is um, the um, board of directors or uh, or uh, persons with um, with the authorization of the um, Hong Kong TVN to produce documents. And the issue may not be the same because uh, the person involved are different and the outcome may be different. Well, if that is the understanding of 32-1, so is it the case that, uh, well, um, today I ask the secretary, tomorrow says um, undersecretary, and then the DS, and then someone else, and then every day we'll be dealing with the same um, issue? Legal advisor. Okay, they do. I've done some study before. In 2003, 9th of December, Mrs. Rita Fan made a ruling. It's also on Rule 32.2. The principle adopted was at the time. Um, the wordings of the motion had to be considered and compared with the wordings of another motion that was uh, vetoed, that whether they were substantially the same. For both motions, uh, they were to urge the government to implement universal suffrage as soon as possible. Both were to urge the government to do so. So Mrs. Rita Fenn said because both targeted the uh, government, so the uh, second motion was not allowed. But here, the target is different. But I think at the end, it's up to the president to decide. Because uh, if, if um, the motion is passed, then you still have to go to the president. Now, but on this case, should uh, members of this panel first come come to some conclusion before we could vote on this motion? Legal advice is procedural matter. If the chairman believes that uh, Rule thirty two two is such that uh, you need to first make a ruling, then of course the chairman of this panel could make a ruling first. Uh, members, do you have any other? Comments now, Chairman. I would ask you to make a ruling on whether is in breach of Rule Thirty Two Two before we decide whether to deal with this motion. Mr. James Toll. At this panel, it's just a decision of this panel, and in this panel, there have not been two motions that are substantially the same and that have been voted down. So technically, Chairman, I don't think you need to make a ruling. But of course, I don't mind if you make a ruling. But if you intend to make a ruling, Chairman, I, as a member, I believe the motions are not substantially the same way. Mr. Paul J said, well, the uh, secretary, undersecretary, or permanent secretary could be the next target. Well, then it's easy to understand. Secretary or undersecretary is not that they own different, uh, they possess different uh, documents. They still uh, control these documents on behalf of the government. But here, this time round, the subject is the TV station. Well, not the station, it's a, just a company. It hasn't got a license, so it's just a TV company. Then. The, we are talking about different principle. It's not the government, so I don't think Mr. Paul J should muddy the water here for us. Mr. Sitho, Mr. Chairman, I agree with the legal advisor. First of all, the uh, subject is different, the principle that is, and also just before the meeting today, we received a document from the Communications Authority, and uh, in that document. We um, learned about information that uh, wasn't previously known when we had a debate in on Wednesday and Thursday. That's why there's need for us to invite uh, Mr. Ricky Wong to produce the relevant documents um, 
under the Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Now, Mr. Paul Zier has asked a question. The legal advisor has answered him, and other members have also um, expressed their views. Now, I open the floor to other members for a discussion. Actually, it's time, uh, uh, so I extend the meeting to to seven fifteen for now. So let's address this issue first. I think uh, all of you will probably speak um, on this issue. In that case, I'll cancel the second round of uh, speeches. We'll have a sec another meeting, so there will be time for members to have a detailed discussion. If each member only gets one minute, so what's the point, as Mr. James so said? And uh, especially for you people, you like to repeat your point, so it's a waste of time. So let's deal with this issue first. 7.15, okay? Fine. Next, Mr. Ronnie Tong. Mr. Chairman, I don't think we need to debate this issue. It's a legal issue. The legal advisors already rendered his advice. Uh, I think now it's for you to make a ruling, Chairman. You definitely have the authority to make a ruling, and then we would deal with the issue. Either you say that uh, we are not allowed to vote, or we are allowed to vote. That's all. Uh, that's all you need to rule on. There's no point um, keep arguing until seven fifteen. In any case, uh, even if we have to vote, it will take us to 7.15, so it doesn't matter because I've decided there won't be a second round of speeches from members because members have asked for it. Because there's limited time left, I cannot keep extending the meeting indefinitely, right, Mr. Ron, Tom? Because there are over 10 people on the waiting list for a second, for a second round. Who else, please? Ms. Kaudemo. No, we have the rules of procedure. We have an agenda. I've always been concerned that we would never have time for the PNP motion. And I've also sought legal advice that if there's um, a duplication of the weddings, then there could be a dispute. That's why the, uh, in my letter to the House Committee, I made it clear it's about the free market economy that our cornerstone has been uh, undermined. Well, Miss Mo, as I said, uh, your yeah, I know it's not uh, relevant. Okay, we you think you have already um, gone wrong this, but I'm sure someone else would raise the same point. Paul Jay would raise the same point at the House Committee that there would still be a debate at the House Committee. Okay, Paul Jay, just one minute. Okay, I don't try to confuse uh, anybody. For Rule 32.2, does it refer to the council or what? And uh, if um, the same motion is tabled where? I hope want the legal advisor to make that clear. And I would like to ask the legal advisor whether we have any PMP targeting private um, organizations, not government departments. If there is such a president, what is it? Two questions then, legal advisor. For Rule 32.2, if the chairman believes it's relevant, then he has to make a ruling. But it doesn't state here whether it applies to that, that. It doesn't say here it applies to the panel. It refers to the council. So it's not clear whether Rule 32.2 applies to panels. You are not clear, or uh, are we not clear? Because if you're not clear, then uh, we can defer it, uh, and you can check. Yeah, I'm. I do, I'm not sure now, so I have to study it further. Now, as to whether there's been a PMP motion targeting individual uh, private sectors, I think Lang Chi Man, the New World Company, Lehman Brothers. You know, those cases. Okay, the Paul uh, Paul Jay has made his point, and the legal advisor has uh, given an answer. Now I'll make a ruling because we have to resolve the matter. The panel, even if the panel passes this motion, we still have to go through other procedures. But in any case, I thank Paul Mr. Jay for raising this point. I believe, uh, in accordance with. Rule 32, two of the rules of procedure, where the council has taken decision on a specific question, and the question has been decided in a negative. No further motion shall be moved in relation to that question during the current session. Two days ago, we uh, voted down uh, the, a motion, and I'll read out the wordings for you. That's uh, Mr. Charles Mock's uh, motion moved under the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. I uh, voted in favor of it, but uh, someone wronged me. They said I abstained. It's not true. So the wording is the motion. Uh, 
that the panel on information technology and broadcasting be authorized under Section 92 of the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance Cap 382 to exercise the powers conferred by Section 91 of that ordinance to order the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development to attend before the panel on information technology and broadcasting on or before the 8th of November 2013 to produce all relevant papers books, records or documents involved in the processes of vetting and approval of domestic free television program service license applications by the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government, including but not limited to all relevant documents and reports submitted by the former Broadcasting Authority to the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government. Now, the motion put forward by the eight members, I've read out the wordings already. Now, this uh, motion is... Uh, about summoning Mr. Ricky Wong to produce documents uh, under the powers and privileges ordinance just, just to give him legal protection. So it's not the same or relevant motion to the one that was uh, voted down. Uh, that's why I think this motion is valid. So let's uh, put it to a vote. Now, we, uh, let me read out uh, members' names. If you are not the members of the channel, please do not raise a hand. Apart from the chairman, Wong yuk who would not vote, so we have a deputy chairman, Dr. Elizabeth Kwok, Ms. Emily Lau, Wong Ting Kwong, Ho Sit Ho, to uh, Ronnie Tong, uh, uh, Paul Che, Long Kwok Hong, Claudia Mo M Leung Ching, uh, Stephen Ho, Ma Fung Kwok, Prao Smok, Ray Chen, Christopher Cheung, Sin Chung Kai, N Chen, Lo Wai Kwok, Christopher Chung, Regina Yip, and Yu Si Wing. Now, those are the members who could vote on this motion. For others just attending the meeting, they cannot vote. And um, please uh, keep your hands up so we could uh, count the vote. Yes. Okay, the motion uh, put forward by the eight members. I'll read out the weddings again before we put it to a vote. The eight members include uh, Ray Chen, Sit Ho, Emily Lau, Lan Kwok, Hong Chao, Smok, uh, Sin Chung Kai, Ronnie Yi Tong, and to James To that the panel on information that um, under that the panel on information technology broadcasting be authorized under section 92 of the legislative council powers and privileges ordinance cap 382 to exercise the powers conferred by section 91 of that ordinance to order the chairman of the board of directors of the Hong Kong television network uh, to attend before the panel on information technology and broadcasting to produce all relevant papers, books, records, or documents involved in the processes of vetting and approval of domestic free TV program service ap license applications. Those in favor, hands up, please. Please uh, let me read out your names and then you can put your hand down. Claudie Mo, Ronnie Tong, Charles Mock, Sid Ho, Emily Lau. Ray Chen, James To, Leung Kwok Hong. Those against, hands up please. Keep your hands up please. Christopher Chung, you can put your hands down. En Chen, Regina Ip, Ng Leung Sing, Yu Si Wing, Wong Ting Kwong, Christopher Chung, Lo Wai Kwok, Stephen Ho, Elizabeth Kwok. Who else? Paul Chair, did you raise your hand? Abstention? Okay. Paul Chair, who asked the question, abstained from the vote. Who else, please? Who else uh, is abstaining uh, apart from Paul Jet, Ma Fung Kwok as well? Who else, please? No? So let me read out the voting results. Those in favor? Claudia Mo, Ronnie Tong, Charles Mock, Sid Ho, Emily Lau, Ray Chen, James To, and Lam Kwok Hong, eight in favor. Those against? Christopher Chung, An Chen, An Chan, Regina Ip. Ng Leung Sing, Yu Si Wing, Wong Ting Kwong, Christopher Cheung, Lo Wai Kwok, Stephen Ho, and Elizabeth Kwok, 10. Uh, abstention, Ma Fung Kwok, and Paul Jie. So the motion is not carried.
is now 7.15. So we'll schedule another meeting for the second round of questions from members. And uh, hopefully we could also invite Mr. Ambrose Ho to our meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Hong Kong TV Network and Hong Kong TV Entertainment. Ah, <laughs>